welcome along to the Property Academy podcast by Opus Partners. I'm your host, Tim Knight. And today on the show, we have got a data day. Go on, do the darts. We're doing this on YouTube so they can see your darts. It's data (laughs) day. Yes, we are doing this on YouTube, but also our audio version for our podcast listeners. And we're doing an update on the New Zealand property market. And the reason we're doing this is there is so much going on in the property market in New Zealand right now. Things are changing, and so there is a lot to talk about. The first thing that I want to show you is data released, oh, it was mid-November it would have come out. And what we're looking at specifically is how house prices changed in October. What is this? They've increased by 0.2%. So what have we seen in terms of house prices this year? Well, as far back as March... 2% 2% decline in that month, another 2% in April, uh, quite a big percent again in, in May before we get another 2% down in June. And then recently, the last four months, July, 1.3% down. August, 1.2%. What's this? September, down 0.7%. October, their first month. After seven consecutive months of house price declines, we see an increase, a small increase, 0.2%. Now, let me be clear as we're going to get into, we are not saying the property market has turned, oh, the gravy train's back. No, (laughs) that's not what we're saying. But this is interesting because for you guys on YouTube, look at this red line. This is the rolling average over the last three months. And the trend is pretty clear. What are we seeing in the trend, Andrew? We're seeing it come closer to zero. We're seeing a slowdown in the house price declines. And that trend is pretty clear. And what that signals to us is certainly that the significant house price falls are over. The, the big 2% per month house price falls that are gone. We may still see some small house price falls, but hey, we're coming to the end game of this downturn. This is some uh, pretty, pretty clear evidence starting to see that of this, at least in the trend line. And you can see it here as well, Andrew, when we just look at the actual house prices. So what we were looking at was just over here was the monthly change in house prices. Here we see what the house prices actually were. And we can see, God, look how they peaked in November last year. They f- fell pretty consistently, and we've just seen a very, very small, very minuscule uh, tick up. It may come back down, but we are just starting to see some evidence that the market may be almost at its turning point. Now, what I also want to talk to you about, though, is how areas around the country are changing. So the graph I'm going to put in front of you, Andrew, is over the last three months, how have house prices changed in our major cities? Now, what's interesting is how things have changed around the country. Not everywhere is up, but of course, again, let me be clear, we're talking about small increases. But look how Auckland actually did increase by 0.5 of a percent over the last month. Christchurch up 0.3. New Zealand, as I said, up 0.2. And Wellington up 0.1. Yeah, Hamilton's still down a percent. And Tauranga still down 1.8%. And of course, the other thing is, the data is very volatile for these smaller regions like Christchurch or Tauranga. You know, Wellington's up 0.1%. Gosh, it could be down 05 or even 1% next next month as well. So I'm not saying that uh, these are massive gains that, that uh, we're going to see permanently in the market, but I'm just looking for signals that we may be starting to see a turn. And look how prices have changed over the last three months around some of these larger cities. What do we see here? So we're seeing the, the biggest uh, decrease in Wellington, uh, and followed closely by Tauranga uh, and Hamilton next. But Dunedin, actually growth over the last three months. Yeah, but at 1.4% increase. What's interesting here for me is that, remember, when we first entered the downturn phase, Auckland was fe- was falling really, really fast. Mm. Now, remember, the reason for that is Auckland increased to about three to four months before uh, the peak of the boom, before the market peaked in November. We saw Auckland race ahead 
of the rest of the country, and then it fell pretty sharply. It's down about 14% in total. What's interesting here is that our two favourite cities that we like to invest in, Andrew, Auckland and Christchurch, are falling much more slowly than some of the other major centres, mm. like Hamilton. Over the last three months, Hamilton's down 2.7%, almost 3%. Auckland and Christchurch, closer to that 1.5%, 1.6, 1.7. Whereas Tauranga, down 3%. Wellington, still down a massive 4.2% as a region. Of course, that's one of the areas that we've been sticking a wee bit away from uh, recently because not as much confidence in there. So two major things from uh, that big tirade. Uh, first of all, we are starting to see some evidence that, hey, we're very near the ter near the turn. I, I'm not saying that house price is going to keep going up by 0.2% or we're going to see higher than that next month, but the trend is certainly there. And the other thing that I want to point out is that we are seeing some areas fare better than others. Obviously, Wellington and Todong are doing particularly poorly. Auckland, Christchurch, Dunedin, not so bad over the last three months. Now, Andrew, for you, does this mean we've come to the end of that downturn? No, it doesn't mean that. And in fact, you know, if we if we look back a few months ago, back in April and May this year, you see uh, that the the decreases slowed down, but then they sped up again. Uh, so you went from what does it say there? Two percent. It failed two percent in April. Then it was one point six percent in May. Should we get our hopes up that the market's correcting? No, no because back down. because it's back down the next month. Yeah, and also remember this data was before we had six percent interest rates, and we're now seeing in the Tony Alexander's real estate survey that uh, we're uh, having a slowdown in first home buyers and investors. And actually, have we got that data there as well, Ed. Yeah, I'll show you it, Andrew. It's very interesting. Now, when we say slowdown, of course real estate agents are reporting that we are still seeing more first home buyers in the market than we previously had, but there has been a small pullback between September and October in terms of the number of first home buyers in the market. They're still coming back but not quite as many as we had the prior month. And I think that is because of those higher interest rates. And in fact, if we look at the investor numbers as well, we still see the same trend. Hey, yes, investors were starting to come back in August and September. And higher bang. interest rates, bam. No, 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 no. <laughs> But we will start to see that trend over time, depending on how interest rates go. Now, one thing that's interesting, why didn't we see in the in the New Zealand Herald or stuff, journalists talking about how for the first time in a long time, we saw house price increases in New Zealand. Like surely that would be quite newsworthy. Mm. Haven't seen it for seven months. Well, one thing that's important to, to understand is that it does take time for this kind of like nerdy property market data that you and I and all of the listeners at home, Andrew, love. And the general sentiment of people out there in the community and in the country who are just going about their daily business. You know, not everybody is as entrenched in the property market as people who are listening to the show. And uh, it does, it will take a couple of months for journalists to kind of pick this up. I remember back when prices were pretty firmly falling, even at the start of this year in February, journalists still uh, focusing on the annual change. Oh my gosh, year on year, house prices have increased still astronomically. Well, yeah, that's true. And now you're going to be looking at year on year. Oh, my God, they've all fallen. But how is it changing today, month to month? Well, we're starting to turn the other way. So I do think that only people who are really at the coalface, people listening to the show, real estate agents, mortgage advisors, maybe a couple of economists as well, are paying attention to this kind of data. And, of course, bear in mind that depending on where you live around the country, where you live isn't going to necessarily be represented in what's happening to the rest of the country. And what I mean by that is, yeah, sure, New Zealand up 0.2%, but that doesn't mean that, or that doesn't help the people in Hamilton whose houses still went down by 1% this, this, uh, this month. And the other thing that's interesting is by the time this podcast is released, there's going to be a lot of people talking about interest rates as well. Yeah, one of the big things that's going to happen this Wednesday when we're recording this, is there's going to be the next OCR announcement and it will very likely go up 
75 points. So probably we're going to see somewhere of an increase between half a percent and one percent. And once once we actually get that announcement, we'll give some more uh, feedback on that. Um, but that is again going to probably put a bit of damper on people's spending power. But do you know what's interesting? And this is why I always try and talk about the increases that we're expecting to see in the OCR on the podcast, on our webinars, everywhere, is that everybody seems to be so surprised when the Reserve (laughs) Bank does this. And I think the reason is, even though I read in the Herald and stuff and on interest.co.nz, oh, we're going to see increases in the OCR. It's going to be somewhere between 0.5 and perhaps up to 1%. And on average, a lot of people are saying 0.75%, right? We're all reading this. And then when it happens, we lose our minds <laughs> and we think, oh, no. It's can't the end be- days. You know, interest rates are going to go up. Well, no, it's already priced into the financial markets. In fact, a 5.5% OCR is already priced in and possibly won't have that much of an impact because they're confirming where market pricing already is. And that's probably one of the big things for investors or for homeowners to bear in mind if they are getting a bit panicky around interest rates. A lot of that has been priced in. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about, though, is, okay, if we're saying the trend is here, we're in the the end game of large house price falls in New Zealand, what would we need to see the market start to take a turn? Well, one thing I think we'd need to see is the talk around interest rates to come the other way. And I think we will start to see that probably sooner rather than later. That might be might be early next year conversations. I think there will be more noises about that. Now, bear in mind that in August this year, 2022, the chief economist at Kiwi Bank was saying, oh, yeah, interest rates have already peaked. Now, it was only the unexpectedly high inflation data that came out that p- pushed interest rates even higher. But I think if we start to see that chat change and people start to think interest rates are coming down, there are better days ahead, I think that could start to have an effect. And one of the interesting things that I have seen Tony Alexander talk about, it, Andrew, is that Because house prices have come down and at the same time incomes have gone up, we are seeing that the ratio of house prices to incomes is going down. Mm. So if you take, look at this, if you take your baseline of about, oh, start of 2010 and you say, okay, how have things changed since then? You can say, okay, yeah, house, house prices have been increasing faster than incomes. And somewhere between, oh, I don't know, let's call it early 2017 and, you know, late 2019, things were pretty steady, actually. You know, house prices, incomes going about the same. Then, God, we had this massive rush during COVID, house prices going up the wazoo, incomes not increasing as much. But we've actually started to see that turn. I'll tell you something interesting. That ratio of house prices versus incomes is only about 7% higher today than it was pre-COVID. A lot of us are looking at that house prices are still up, say, 35% right around the country, thinking, oh, my God, how can this ever be affordable? Yeah, but incomes have increased pretty steadily, actually, over the same period, especially with inflation pushing that up. Now, you do need to look at the other side as well, which is, well, how much does a mortgage cost? And that's gone up lots because interest rates are higher. But there are usually two measures of affordability that people look at. You look at your house price to income ratio, and then you look at the cost of servicing a mortgage. And blow me down, all of the people who like to talk negatively about the property market usually look at it, whichever one's looking yeah, worse. Right. So I remember when we were talking about the cost of servicing a mortgage and how, oh, that's quite cheap at the moment, isn't it? Because interest rates are so low. Everybody cared about house price to income ratios. Right. Now it's switched the other way and house price to income ratios are going down. People are switching what they're talking about. Now, look, we've got to wrap this up, but what is it going to take in your mind for the market to turn around? So that change in the conversation around interest rates, that expectation of interest rates coming down. I think another one is just improved immigration policy in New Zealand, which seems to be easing up. And probably the big one for next year, getting that election out of the way. And certainly uh, uh, that would probably result in some more um, certainty around what's going to happen with interest deductibility, for example. And just before we do wrap up, It's very interesting. You hear a lot of people trying to time the market. As much as we say, you can't time the market perfectly, you can't time the market perfectly. Nobody ever bloody listens to us, Andrew. (laughs) And and so all all the listeners of the show try and time the market perfectly. What I do want to say is 
If you are looking for signs that the market is coming to its bottom, this is it. And you're not going to see this in stuff. You're not going to see this in the Herald. No, no journalist is pulling out the monthly Ryan's data, mainly because they don't have access to it and those organisations don't pay the five to ten grand uh, they need to in order to get that data. And are plotting it out for you and showing you what the moving average has. Look, if you are looking for signs, are you listening to the audio version of this, go to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and check out this video as well. Because looking at this data here of what is the monthly change in house prices and what is the trend, this red line here showing that the three monthly trend is certainly an increase. Not saying that, we, that we're that we going to see another increase next month. That's not what I'm saying. But the trend is certainly going towards us coming to the trough. Now, we're still predicting March next year, whether it's going to be January or whether it's going to be December or whether it's going to be slightly later. Nobody knows the exact month. Don't worry about the exact month. Focus on this trend here because we are coming to the end of it. Right, let's wrap it up there. But please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the Property Academy podcast. Really does help us get the message out to more people. And hey, if you want to invest based on the strategies we talk about on this podcast, based on the strategies that we talk about in the book, then your next step might be to book a portfolio planning session where you get to follow those strategies with one of the financial advisors who work with Andrew and myself. Now, easy way to sign up for that, whip out your phone, send us a text. Text the word PLAN to 5522. We'll give you a buzz. See if it's the right fit for you. listening to the Property Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Knight. Andrew Nichol. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tactics and insights to help you get the most.